Hello ladies and gentlemen, PlayAsia is responsible for this video because I wouldn't have been able to afford this game without them. If you want to support me and the channel, go buy something at the affiliate link in the description to help me out, and you can use the coupon code BLUEVITA for a little bit off your order. And I've also got my patrons to thank. Thanks to Alan, Billy, Blizz, Brett, Caleb, Chen, Christoph, David, Edia, Eric, Gary, Joey, the other Joey, new patron Christopher, Matthew, Miguel, Mathaldu, Raymond, Rodrigo, Sackchief, and Z for their continued support. You can find my Patreon link in the description as well. Thanks for your support. Enjoy the show. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Blue Maxima, and I'm here checking out Katamari Damacy Reroll. This is a remake of the original Katamari Damacy. I need to unplug my headphones because holy crap, they're loud. And this is interesting. I've never actually played the original game, and it was nice to see that they actually went and did a HD version. However, they only put it out on the Switch and the PC, and I'm like, well, what would I play it on? My Switch or my GPD Win 2? My GPD Win 2 went out. One out. One out. And I played it on that for most of the time, but right now I'm recording on my desktop PC, which should have no issues whatsoever. On my GBD Win 2 though, the game actually performed really well. Like, it got to 60 frames per second most of the time. But outside of that, it would drop every now and again to like 50 or 45. Nothing too out of the ordinary. So, yeah, it, it, it's actually really lightweight. It's a pretty good example of a HD port, mainly because it doesn't require much on the requirements. So... Let's go have a quick look around. This is our home planet, and this is where we can come to check things like our presents. And our presents are basically just little things that we can... Little trinkets that we can put on that you find in the levels. You can come here to save and load. Now, notably, the game doesn't actually save automatically. However, they do warn you about this. So I'm fine with it being like that because, well, that's just the way it was normally because it was a console game. You can check out your collection to see all the objects you've got, the locations of them, and sort them by name if you like. So you can see that there are different objects, and apparently people are treated as objects, which is kind of interesting. And you can also see them by size if you feel like it, which is cool. They have a lot of different objects in this game. It actually really helps with the sense of detail that they got going on. We'll get to that. You can change the sound sliders. You can see how you've been doing on the constellations up in the sky because this game's story is bloody ridiculous, and it's actually pretty good for that. And let's go have a look at the actual controls. So, you've got the ability to play this game co-op. I haven't actually tried it yet, but, well, I don't plan on trying it at all, if I'm being perfectly honest. You can also change the controls, and it's kind of interesting. The simple controls have everything on one stick, but the regular controls have everything on two sticks. I would actually recommend playing with the two-stick option. It would make the game almost impossible to play on keyboard because you have to have your fingers on, I think it was WASD and IJKL or something like that. It, it's just kind of ridiculous how weird the control scheme is on keyboard. So yeah, play this on controller. I am playing this on a 360 pad, it's just FYI. You can also turn vibration on and off, which is a big little thing. You can also change what gamepad you're using which I don't plan on changing beyond that. And you can also rebind the keys. I don't know how you'd rebind it to be more comfortable in this game, but you can do that. There are also display settings. Now, these are actually as low as they can go. Let's fix that, shall we? We can turn on all sorts of little things like this. We can also change it from full screen. Hang on, my... There we go. That'll fix it. So, there are a few other options here that you can see. You've got amb ambient inclusion and big net, which I'll leave it all turned on and maxed, because again, this game is really lightweight. I don't know why those weren't on in the first place. I'm guessing Steam Cloud finally caught up with me. I had to move my save files manually. It says it has Steam Cloud support, but I could not get it to go off for some reason. But yeah, whatever. It runs fine, and it still looks pretty good doing it. It's It's got a very nice little... I don't want to call it cell shaded, I don't think that's the word for it, but it reminds me of cell shading. It's a very simple style that makes it actually look really nice. So you can head over to this planet here, the Space Mushroom. I'm not entirely sure what the deal is with these characters here. Like, what, what's, up with all, what's, up, what's up with all these? I think they're like switchable skins or something, but I, I don't know what the deal is with them. The game hasn't really 
has told me why they're here. I've only been playing for about two hours, by the way, so I don't have that much going for me. Uh, oh, that's that was a little bit bizarre, whatever. And if we head on over to Earth, we can have a look at the levels we've got unlocked. I've got a fair few unlocked. As it turns out, I'm near the end of the game. I've only got like a couple of levels left to do in the main storyline, and then there's just a couple of extra side activities left to do. So, yeah, it's actually not that long, like three or four hours at most. This might be a bit much for its USD $29.99 asking price. We actually got a relatively lower um, price here in Australia because they, they, not only did they make it $1 cheaper, so like it's Australian $28.95, but thanks to the conversion rate, that goes to about $25 US. So, that's kind of nice. So we've got a bunch of different levels here we can do. The main levels are make a star. And once you finish them, you unlock the side levels like make cancer, make sickness, make ursa major, and all that stuff. But what we're going to do is we're going to find a certain level. The one I just played, just to be specific. That was make a star six. I need to remember if I'm up to seven or if it's eight. As you can see, it's kind of hard to navigate this. Uh... Was it, what's it, six? Oh, whatever, we'll, we'll go play Mega Star Six, because that is, that'll be as good a demonstration as any. So this is the king of all cosmos. He has a ball chin, and he has ripped all the stars out of the sky. He's also an absolute weirdo. Basically, you're the prince under the King of All Cosmos, and you need to put the stars back in the sky. How do you do this? By going and rolling up the Earthlings. All their objects, all their people, and all of that stuff. Alright, so he's saying that he's given the present away to someone on Earth, that means there's a present hidden on the level that we're going to. And here we are. We'll be rolling around the world, fair enough. We, you, before we started in a house, and then we ended up in a town, and now we're in the world. We need to make our Katamari reach 3 meters, and we have 11 minutes to do it. So let's go. So the controls in this game are very simple. They're also quite complicated. It's a little bit bizarre. Like, you have full control over your Katamari, which is the ball. And you use both sticks to move around. So if you put both forward, you'll move forward. If you put both of them to the left, you'll move to the left. You can also do them in opposite directions in order to turn. So if I do that, you can see that I start turning there. You also have a charge roll ability, which I have not been able to figure out to save my life. So if I, if I just um, click both sticks to turn around real quick, if you press up, down, up, down, up, down, okay, it worked there. I couldn't get it to work on my GPD Win 2. I'm not entirely sure why. You do also have controls that you let you look around the place a bit. So if I hit uh, LB, it'll let me look around. If I hit RB, it'll let me jump and see an aerial view. I don't have much use for these, but I imagine that people that are going for the really high scores will want to make as much use of them as possible. So, yeah. So yeah, this is the game, more or less. Roll around and roll up stuff. It all clumps onto your ball like a... Oh god, that moves. That's not great. Uh, it all clumps up onto your ball like a giant pile of shit. Like, look at this. this it, it, we've only been going for about a minute already, and this is an absolute mess of random objects. But that's cool, because, well... Seriously, it actually looks kind of amazing. And under your fingers, with the control scheme, it really does feel like you're rolling around a giant ball of crap is magnificently sucked up from around the world. It legitimately feels like a roll a ball around and suck everything in your way up simulator. It's also got some really nice shrinking and growing animations. Like you saw one back there where it was it, it was a quick blur and then it just um oh dear. Oh dear. there we go where it was a quick blur and then you will look slightly bigger this will exacerbate as you go on and grow even more 
So you have plenty of growing to do, and you'll eventually get bigger and bigger and bigger. And once you do, you'll be able to do things like come back to an area that you were previously and just suck up more stuff that you previously won't be, won't be able to. Like, there is very little in this game that can't be added to the ball eventually. Like, that fence that we just passed, that fence can eventually be sucked up into the ball. These cardboard boxes, you run into them right now, you can't suck them up. They can be added to the ball. Those human beings, they can be added to the ball. Those vending machines can be added to the ball. This flower box that I'm right next to, it can be added to the ball. There is not a... S well, there, there are very, very few things in this game that can't eventually be added to the ball. And it's an, actually a pretty amazing amount of detail. Like, I'm pretty sure if I get big enough, I wouldn't be surprised if I could nick those trees straight out of the ground, no questions asked, because... This is the sort of game that would probably let me do that. And it's actually kind of impressive that it does. The amount of just environmental detail in the world that lets you actually just suck up all this crap is a really... It, it's just really well done. Like, it is honestly quite amazing just how much will go into the ball. And of course it all looks really good, like, sure you can argue there's a few things going on that aren't particularly great, like the uh, texture on the ground there is obviously really repeated, and everything that is, um, isn't, there's a lot of things that aren't textured, and they all look just a bit, well, simple. And you can argue that's a point against the game, but I argue it's a point for it. The detail is actually really nicely done. It's got, it's got a really nice style to it that really makes it work. So now that we've grown up a bit, we can actually go back and get some bigger stuff. I know from experience that if I come back when I'm too big, I actually won't be able to get back out the door. So I should come back here and just grab a few extra things while I've got the time. But yeah, as you can see, I've started sucking up things like the flower boxes and the fence posts and these, oh, those trees I can't do yet, but I'm big enough to actually swallow humans now. See? I knocked him flat on his ass, which means if I can just get over to him, yoink, he's now part of the ball. Alright, we're leaving, because if I get any bigger than this, I will start to run into problems trying to get out the gate. So, there we go. See, now I can suck up the humans. Or I can just, like, knock them flat on their ass, at which point I can then suck them up. As I said, there is very little in this game that you can't roll. Like a vending machine. <laughs> See, it wasn't able to get it before, but now I can take it. And... It is actually very satisfying to play. It is immensely satisfying, in all honesty, because... Being able, going through an area, seeing all these big objects that you can't pick up just yet, but seeing just enough little stuff to get you on the way to rolling up the biggest amounts of stuff. And then coming back later, seeing all this stuff just laid out tiny compared to your Katamari, and being able to immediately roll it all up without without fail, is one of the most satisfying things I've actually played in a long time, if I'm being perfectly honest. The, the just overwhelming sense of scale that they've got going on too. Like, eventually you just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And if you get big enough, you can... It looks like you dwarf everything. Having fun out here? I can actually go and get those buoys. I, I didn't even expect that. I thought that would have been an invisible wall at some point. Actually, can I get this one? Nah. Too big. Too small. What a shame. There is some difficulty in this game. Oh yes, now that I've done that, he'll come in and he'll give his opinion. It's a nice Katamari. Very airy and exciting, but we'd like, we'd like to see a bigger one. Fair enough. So now that we're even bigger... We can try and go and suck up some other things. Because there's still parts of the world that we haven't explored yet. 
Now there is some difficulty. Now, it might not look like it's that hard and to be fair, it's not really, like not in the grand scheme of things, I wouldn't call this game very hard. But at the same time, there is definitely some limitations. Like for example, if you run into something that moves or something that is much bigger than you at a high speed, it will knock something off the Katamari. It will absolutely make it so that your Katamari will get just that little bit smaller. And you will need to go back and grab what you've lost. That is absolutely a thing they make you do in this game. Obviously this can be avoided with good play, but it's just worth mentioning. Good night. Oh, I'm starting to make pick him up. So you don't want to go running into stuff that you aren't sure you can pick up too quickly, because if you do, you might end up in a position where you just end up losing a bunch of stuff instead of actually gaining some size, which is something that you just want to be careful about. And as I said before, whoops. And as I said before, if you get too big, there are certain areas that you just can't get back into. So, for example, if I actually wander up to the gate up here to where I started now, chances are it's not actually going to let me back in because I'll just be too big. So if I just... Oh no, I might actually get... Yeah, I can get back through here. But now, I can actually just grab everything. Now what happens if I try and get back through the gate? Huh, I actually made it through. Last time I tried that, I couldn't get back through. It was actually surprisingly annoying. Uh, yeah, and I'm still losing crap against those. I'm guessing I'm not able to actually pick up those palm trees. What about this, though? Nope, still can't grab that either. What about the buoys? Apparently not. So, yeah. Ooh, people. <laughs> Look at them squirm. Listen to them scream. It really is actually kind of... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of scary. Because... Imagine that. Just you're, you're walking around, minding your own business, and suddenly this giant ball comes and rolls you up. And all of a sudden, you can't do anything anymore. You are stuck to this ball like a... Like this... Uh, like flies on flypaper. You're just stuck there. And, and you just can't get out, no matter what you do. It would be horrifying. And this game actually does have a bit of an existential dread about it. So you can't get through the gate now. I'm just too big. So... Yeah. There is a bit of difficulty in both making sure that you can fit through certain areas and also making sure that uh, you do things in the right order. Because if you don't do things in the right order, you might end up in a position where you can't get the biggest Katamari possible. It is pretty easy to get the... Oh, I didn't even see this area up here. It is pretty easy to get a Katamari that's big enough in order to actually succeed in the game. But there are... The stars do look bigger and fancier if you have the biggest Katamari imaginable. So, there is a bit of a sort of score attacking bent to it, which is really nice. Because it means that it gives the game a bit of replayability. Because you can go through, see if you can get through in the fastest way possible. And yeah, you get the general idea. So once your time's up, you get picked up and brought back. And you get to see a little bit of a zoom out of the level. What do you think? It's pretty big. But it'll make a... It'll make a pretty star. But I hit the goal pretty quickly. It'll also tell you what you sucked up the most of. Which is a really neat little thing. Do you want this to be a star or stardust? Oh, it's actually smaller than the one I made before. So let's make it stardust instead. I haven't actually replayed a level yet. So... Oh, okay. So I'll make stardust. So it'll... I, I assume that if I... Oh, okay. right. If I view constellations, yeah, make stardust. So there are a few extra little stars just dotted around the place. Also, the yeah, that's the mushroom. You can actually go straight to it from here, which is a neat touch. 
Yeah, yeah there's Earth. Go to Earth? Sure. So as I said, there's also secondary levels that you can do. And these secondary levels are actually pretty interesting. They, they take place on the same levels. But they usually have a different goal. So... It's not graceful. It's not lacking grace. So what he wants me to do is he wants me to go down and make a Katamari, but he wants me to pick up graceful things. There's nothing but eggs. Get as many as you can and make a graceful Katamari. What a bizarre concept, but sure, we'll work with it. So yeah, we're working on a small scale this time. We appear to be just rummaging around in the house instead of being out on the town or whatever. With that said though, here's another level full of things that we can suck up. So let's do just that. So yeah, as I said before, the game looks good. Like, it, it legitimately looks really nice. Even, even to this day, this art style holds up. Sure, the textures are a little bit underwhelming, but the models themselves are actually really well done. And especially with 8x any alias, in which I wasn't playing with before, but whatever. Well, hang on, little chick. I'll come get you. There we go. Am I big enough to get the cones yet? I am not. I probably want to get them before I head back down, because I'm not sure if I'm going to way back up here. Yeah, this time it appears to be, um, it be spawning for me. You can roll up those birds, I'm just big enough that they don't actually hurt me now, so I can collide with them nice and safely. As you can see, there's no, um, actual, like, size limit in this one. I haven't actually seen this before. This might actually be a part of a level that I haven't explored fully. Oh, no, 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 no. We don't want to, we don't want to fall down just yet. There we go. I want to grab the eggs and I've fallen down anyway. Oh, well. Oh, they're dropping eggs. Let's just hold here and grab as many of the eggs as we can and rotate while we're waiting to see what happens. Yeah, yeah, this is the garden. Okay. Fair enough. Alright, let's go. Uh, hang on, if I orient myself straight ahead. Yep, there we go. You can actually hit hit these hard enough to um drop stuff if you hit them at the wrong angle. Hang on, we'll go up here instead. There, easy done. Orient myself and go. The soundtrack is also amazing. It is very Japanese. It's It's got a lovely sense of style about it. And it really is just um, a pleasure to listen to. It also sounds absolutely freaking nuts, but that's just the way. But that's just the way weird Japanese games like this one work. They often do sound completely and utterly nuts. Right, so I'm guessing it's. I'm, I'm not going to say it's random, but it, for someone who's only playing this for the first time, I'm guessing that either. Either there is some minor way to tell the right eggs apart, or they just hatch randomly. One way or another. So you can't get through here. Too big. Have to find another way around. But yeah, the music, ridiculous. The game's story, even more so. I haven't actually shown this off, and I'm not going to be able to show you, because I, um, I've played levels that I've played before. But there are these weird cutscenes about these two little kids who are actively concerned about the stars disappearing from the sky, but they manage to actually catch eyes on the King of All Cosmos looking over them, and it just... It makes the kids look absolutely nuts, but at the same time, the adults are also complete weirdos for not worrying about the fact that all the stars have disappeared. It's really weird, but at the same time... At, at the same time, everybody's just a little bit weird in this game. The King of All Cosmos is a weirdo because he has, um... Because he's gone and destroyed all the stars in the sky. The prince is a weirdo because he goes along with this shit. <laughs> it's uh, it's all just a little bit weird. The cutscenes are also very strange as well. But again, as far as I can tell, there's actually no way to play them outside of a um. There's no way to play them outside of actually finishing the story level, which is a little bit dis disappointing. But nothing nothing too. Bad. Oh, yeah. Grab all the eggs. 
because it'll make me nice and big, and that means I can go and steal things like sushi. Silly prince. That won't hatch. It's sushi now. Ah, uh -huh. I just realized what that meant. Oh, look at that. Extra eggs, extra eggs, extra eggs, extra eggs. We, we want the eggs. Give me, give me the eggs. Give me all the eggs. a lot. I feel bad for people whose names are Eggsy. Like, there must be so many, like, cracked egg jokes you could make. thing I really don't like about this game is not so much the time limits, it's just that when when you hit one minute you start hearing that weird siren sound and it's just like, it's not that pleasant to listen to. They really didn't need to make it as loud as they did. Let's go get some eggs. There are some eggs over there. I want those eggs. Give me the eggs. Give me the eggs. They will, they will hatch into majestic swans. Hello, chickens. We see. He and a doll, we suspect. I don't know what that means. Ten seconds. I think I've collected all the eggs I'm going to find. So there's two eggs right there on the screen, but I've made my point. 72% completed. That's pretty good. Feathers everywhere. This is so great. It's difficult to hold with just one hand. We can hold it a lot more light than this. Let's just release it into the sky. And that is a partially complete Cygnus. Oh, hey, it's one of the cutscenes. Yep, it is absolutely bizarre. So if we head down here to view constellations, we can see Cygnus! 72% completed. I've got some others over here, like I got um Corona Borealis, which is only 39% completed. And I know I've also got this one, Cancer, 73% completed. And you get the general idea, you just point the stars back in the sky. What a weird way to view your progress through a game. Look up the, at the sky and look at the stars. But yeah, that was a quick look at Katamari Damacy Reroll. It's a really good port, and it's a really interesting game. It is a lot of fun to go around rolling a lot of stuff up. The replay value is enhanced by the fact that they've designed the levels just right so that you've got a reason to replay and go and make your stars and your constellations bigger and all turn them into stardust to make the sky look nice and full. It looks really good, it sounds really good in its own weird way, and it's just a really enjoyable game to play. I'm grateful they did a HD remaster of it so I could come and give it a look. So, I did. And uh, that's pretty much it. So there you go. This has been Blue Maxima, and I will see you all next time.